to our channel Elmika Mtandaoni. We are in the 14th episode and here we will explain how we can analyze and interpret qualitative uh, data. Uh, analyzing qualitative data requires an understanding of how to make sense out of text and images so that you can form answers to your research questions. So basically here we don't deal with numbers but we deal with text what the participants said or what you have seen and you have captured it in those images so you try to make sense out of whatever you have gathered using either text or using images so there are a number of steps that you should follow as a researcher while you are doing qualitative analysis after you have collected your data let's say you have collected text files such as field notes transcriptions or optically scanned materials then you prepare your data for analysis in the preparation of data for analysis you transcribe the field notes then the researcher reads through the data to obtain a general sense of the material after that the researcher codes the data or locates text segments and assign a code label to them again you the codes uh, the codes the, the text for you code those text for a description to be used in your research or you can code those texts for themes to be used in the research report now how do you prepare and organize data for analysis initial preparation of data for analysis requires organizing the vast amount of information you transfer such amounts uh, from spoken to written words uh, to a typed file and you make decisions about whether to analyze those uh, data using your hand or using your computer uh, analyzing using your hand uh, we normally use uh, color codes to mark uh, for the themes for the codes etc but you can use a computer program to facilitate this process and the, the most popular computer program that is used we call it in vivo it is spelled as n v i v o uh, in the process of organizing data you organize data into file folders or computer files Organization of data is critical in qualitative research because of the large amount of information that is gathered uh, during uh, analysis. So how do you do this? You do this by developing a matrix or a table of sources that can be used to help you organize the materials. So as you organize your materials, you organize your materials uh, basing on the following criteria. You can organize your material basing on types. So you can put, for example, all the interviews, you put them in one place, all the observations, you put it in another place, all documents, all photographs, or other visual materials. But you can also organize them or uh, organize them, those materials, by participants who said what who did what or you can uh, do that by using site or location when you went to this site what uh, materials did you gather when you went to this location what materials did you gather so you keep duplicate of all forms of data that you have collected and what is to transcribe transcription is the process of converting audio tape recording or field notes into text data it is like typing uh, you listen to whatever uh, interview that you have done and then you type in a computer uh, in a computer file so you convert the audio tape into rec uh, audio tape recording or uh, whatever you have recorded or the field notes you put them into text data after that you go and do the analysis of your data so you can analyze by hand or you can analyze by a computer let us talk about analyzing by hand the hand analysis of quantitative data means that the researchers read the data mark it by hand and divide it into parts traditionally analyzing text data involves using color to mark parts of the text or cutting and pasting uh, such text sentences into some cards Hand analysis may be preferred uh, when uh, the following criteria happens. When you are analyzing a small database, if you are analyzing a small database, then you can opt to analyze uh, by hand. Example, you have fewer than uh, 500 pages of transcripts or field notes, and you can easily keep track of the files and you can locate the text passages. Or if you are not comfortable with the uh, comfortable with using computers or you have not learned a uh, qualitative computer software for example you are not competent in using uh, in vivo uh, software how do you explore uh, and code the data the the first step in data analysis is to explore the data 
a preliminary exploration or exploratory analysis in qualitative research consists of exploring the data so that you can obtain sense of the data, you memo ideas, then you think about the organization of the data and you consider whether you need more data or those data that you have gathered are enough. Again, you read the transcripts in their entirety several times, you immerse yourself in the details, you try to get sense of the interview as a whole before breaking it into some parts. So you write some memos in the margins of the field notes or the transcripts or under the paragraphs, you write some things there, then he, this will help you to have initial process of exploring your data. Then these memos or the short phrases, or the ideas, the concepts, or the hunches that you put, they, that they occur to, to you. After that, then you come and code the data. The object of the coding process is to make sense out of the text data. That means you divide that data into text or image segments. You label the segments with the codes into broad, broad themes. Thus, this is an uh, inductive process of narrowing data into a few themes. What are the steps involved uh, in coding? Uh, as you are coding, first you get a sense of the whole by reading all the transcripts careful. You jot down in the margins some ideas as they come to mind. Then you pick one document, example, an interview or the field note. Then you choose the most interesting or the shortest or the one on, the, on top of the pile. You go through it, you ask the questions like, what is this person talking about? then you consider underlying meanings and you write it down in the margins in two or three words. Then you begin the process of coding the, the document. Thus, the process of coding involves identifying text segments. You place the brackets and around them and you assign a code word or a phrase that accurately describes the meaning of the text. For example, sentences or paragraphs that all relate to a single code you call them a text segment. So codes are labels used to describe a segment of a text or a segment of an image. Codes can address many different topics. For example, you can address settings and context. You can address perspectives held by participants. You can address processes or activities or different strategies. That is the sense. But how do you use codes to build a description and themes? In a quantitative or in a qualitative research study, uh, you need to analyze the data to form answers to your research questions. So this process involves examining the data in details to describe what you learned, and you develop themes or broad categories of ideas from that data. After that, you describe and you develop themes from the data that consist of answering the major research questions and forming an in-depth understanding of the central phenomena through description and thematic development. So you can do description or you can do uh, thematic development. But not all qualitative projects include both description themes, but all studies must include at least themes. Speaking of description, because description is a detailed rendering of people, places, or events in a setting, in qualitative research, it is the easiest way to start the analysis after the initial reading and coding of your data. So in some forms of qualitative research designs, such as in ethnography or in case studies, the researcher provides a considerable description of the setting, the area where you have done your study. To describe an individual or qualitative analysis, you might ask yourself the following questions. What is this person like? What is this place like? So that is how you do your description. Then themes, because themes are similar uh, to codes that are aggregated together to form a major idea in the database. They form a core element in qualitative data analysis. Like codes, themes have labels that typically consist of no more than two or four words. For example, you can say uh, development planning or denial or uh, importance of analysis, etc. Through initial data analysis, you may find 30 to 50 codes in subsequent analysis. You reduce these codes to five 
all seven major themes through the process of uh, eliminating redundancies. There are different types of uh, themes. You can have uh, ordinary themes, you can have unexpected themes, you can have hard to classify themes or major and minor uh, themes. We'll someday go uh, to in details about these themes. How do you represent uh, and report findings in your study? After you have coded your data, analyze it for description and for themes. There now follows the display of the findings in tables and figures, and you construct a narrative to explain what you have found in the response to your research question. So you represent uh, your research questions uh, through tables, through figures, and you construct a kind of narrative to explain what you have found in your responses. Then how do you represent your findings? Qualitative researchers often uh, display their findings uh, visually by using uh, figures or pictures uh, that augment the uh, discussions. There are different ways where you can represent your findings. You can create a comparison table, you can develop a hierarchical tree diagram, or you present figures with the boxes to show the connections among the themes, or you can draw a map, or you can draw a demographic, uh, you can develop a demographic table. You explain about uh, personal information. Uh, interpretation of the findings. How do you interpret uh, your findings? Interpretation involves making sense of the data or the lessons that you have learned. Interpretation in qualitative research means that the researcher steps back and forms some larger meaning about the phenomenon based on personal views. Then he does comparison with the past studies or both. Then in this case, you will find that interpretation is a final section of your study under the heading like discussion. It is found in a discussion or conclusions or a part that is called interpretations or uh, implications. This section actually includes a review of the major findings and how the research questions were answered. Then uh, you give personal reflections of the research about the meaning of the data. You give personal views compared or contrasted with the literature. Then you provide limitations of the study and some suggestions for the future uh, research. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. This is Elmi Kamtandaoni. In the next episode, we will be explaining on how you can do uh, report writing, how you can report your research that you have done. Remember, we have gone through several episodes explaining how you can do your research. Now, in the end, you will have to write a report. So, thank you very much. This is Elmi Kamtandaoni. Ciao.